Hello friends, it's indeed inspiring to see you back again. Today I'm introducing you Apache Spark. Apache Spark is open source. That means it is free of cost. You can use its license uh, without any kind of cost. It is distributed and scalable. And at the same time, it is cluster computing engine. In simple words, you can say it is unified analytics engine for large scale data processing. It was developed at, at UC Berkeley in 2009. As soon as it came, it was adopted by a lot of companies from different, different domains and different, different industries. And especially companies like Netflix, Yahoo, eBay, they deployed Spark at massive scale. So there were clusters of 8,000 plus nodes where petabytes of data was being processed thousands of contributors from 250 plus organizations are contributing on Spark and making it richer day by day. So it has become the largest open source project in data processing segment. Now let us try to understand why should we go for Apache Spark? The first reason is speed. If you look at Hadoop MapReduce, so it was, it was a wonderful solution and it is still today a wonderful solution. But if you talk about speed, so Apache Spark enhanced or increased the speed from minimum 10 times to 100 times faster than Apache MapReduce. So speed of execution is fabulous, wonderful. Ease of use, Apache Spark is giving 80 plus high level operators in different different programming languages. So that is making the developer to easily create applications and they are parallel in nature. It also gives interactive shells for Python, for SQL, for R and Scala. That is another way how developers can easily create code and test it right away interactively. Generality. Spark has got Spark SQL and data frames where you can process structured data. It has got MLA for machine learning. It has got graphics library for processing graph structured data. It has got streaming library where if the data is streaming, like where the real time data is coming in at runtime, even that can be handled. And the good thing is that you can use all these functionalities in a same, same application and leverage all these functionalities. It runs everywhere. If you want to do experiment, you can start with standalone cluster. If you want it on cloud, you can run it on EC2, Amazon EC2, or you can go for Azure. You can run it on Hadoop Yarn as well. You can utilize, leverage the capabilities of Yarn framework of Hadoop. It can run on Mesos as well as Kubernetes. So this is how Spark Manager or how Spark can manage the whole resources. At the same time, if you want to get the data, access of the data, you can connect it with SDFS, Oluxio, Apache Cassandra, Apache SBase, Hive, and many other such sources. So I believe you must have been convinced that uh, why, why we should go for using Apache Spark. Let us now have a look at the ecosystem. Ecosystem st uh, starts with Spark Core API. So this is the fundamental underlying API, which allows all other functionalities of Spark to function. This API gives us in-memory computing functionality. It also gives us APIs for Python, for Scala, and Java. And on top of it, we have Spark SQL plus data frames, Spark streaming, MLlib graphics. The first one, Spark SQL and data frames. So many data scientists, many business analytics engineers, or people who are working into analytics, they actually need to process structured data a lot and they need to do business reporting, they need to do exploratory data analysis on structured data and further moving machine learning, we will come to that part. So for that particular kind of data, structured data, Spark SQL gives us the uh, SQL-like language, okay, SQL-like functionality, and even uh, it, it gives us an abstraction which is called as data frames, which is a tabular structure. Second one is streaming. Streaming is real-time data. Like we have uh, st water streams, okay, uh, so, so they are live. They are just, uh, you know, uh, keep continuously flowing. Similar way, many applications require real-time data analysis. For example, you're standing on road and you saw that there is some, some accident happened. So if it was unnoticed by any human being, at that time, if the camera was capturing it and there was a real-time processing with the help of tool like Spark is done, then immediate aid or help can be given to that particular, those people who basically met with accident. So streaming data analysis for that, Spark can handle batch processing where you have batch of data coming in processed. At the same time, Spark also helps us with real-time streaming data processing. Next one, the third one is MLlib. 
this is machine learning library so machine learning library in spark is scalable and at the same time it comes up with so many strong high quality algorithms when you go for python packages so there you see like scikit learn is there keras is there they come with strong apis strong algorithms okay similar way mllib is also high quality uh, a collection of high quality algorithms it also has got a component graphx so graphx is graph processing or graph computing engine it can process graph structured data where interactively a user can create and transform and even reason the graph structured data it also has got standard algorithms for graph processing so this is all comes under spark ecosystem i believe this is very interesting if you start exploring it then you will really find it it's it's quite vast and big uh, that is very much true but if you start exploring then you will really find it interesting now let me take you to the next section that is architecture before we actually enter into the architecture let me give you an overview spark has got two most significant abstractions and these two abstractions are rdds and dags okay let me explain you I, I'll, i'll make it simple so rdds they are called as resilient distributed data sets resilient distributed data sets means just pick the word data set okay so in case of hadoop if you see we have data which is getting stored into sdfs it is getting stored in the form of blocks okay blocks are divided into uh, you know blocks divides the data into smaller chunks smaller pieces so rdds are like that they are resilient resilient means they are robust they are fault tolerant so they 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 handle any kind of corruption in the data so that is the nature of uh, the data sets which spark is having distributed they don't lie on a single machine they are distributed across the multiple nodes where spark is actually installed so this is the nature of uh, the data sets which spark handles okay this is one abstraction how spark manages the data another is once we are getting to process the data that time dag actually helps dag is directed acyclic graph the use of dag is it is basically let's say you have a task and it it has got 10 sub tasks okay one job having 10 sub tasks so 10 sub tasks are to be processed in a sequence okay first task then second task maybe like uh, second and third task maybe parallel so this sequence is maintained by dag okay so dag allows spark to create a sequence of events of task that is a usage now let me take you to actual architecture so spark follows master slave architecture like hadoop also follows master slave architecture similar way here we have a process called as master we have a process called as worker now let us get into uh, like how these master slave work there is a another process called as not a process another component called as cluster manager cluster manager binds both of them okay the master node master node and one or more than one cluster nodes uh, worker nodes so so a uh, cluster manager is that component which is binding them which is basically uh, creating that link uh, so that the spark can function so this master this is hub of functionalities whatever spark functionalities are there this is the central point from here only everything will happen this is this is how it happens in a master slave architecture master coordinates and uh, master monitors each and every activity master has got driver program okay before getting into the driver program if you if you know any kind of programming or refer back any c c++ java you might have seen that uh, there is a main function so until and unless you write a main function the program doesn't starts like in case of java jvm needs entry and it needs entry from main function okay similar way master node gives that main function from where the execution will start or initiate so that is the that is what is the importance of master it has got a driver program this driver program has got multiple components like it has got task scheduler dag scheduler backend scheduler so a lot of schedulers are there because driver program interacts with the cluster manager and cluster manager cluster manager can be mesos cluster manager can be spark core uh, cluster manager can be yarn okay so some cluster manager would be there which will be actually uh, scheduling or allocating resources from uh, by discussing with the worker nodes okay so what is happening here driver program interacts with the cluster manager so that for a particular job the resources can be scheduled from the worker nodes now spark context spark context creates rdds we just spoke about our rdd right so rdd is data set so it creates rdds because uh, these worker nodes will come come to them they will process on data sets which data sets rdds only so who will create that spark context will create the rdds now once the rdd is created let us now move to the worker node worker node has got executors executors are basically some processes which will actually execute the task 
so the executor can execute one or more than one tasks okay so one job will have maybe 10 tasks so those 10 tasks will be divided into multiple executors which are spread across the worker nodes okay now after executing the task whatever output is coming that output is sent back to the spark context so this is how th these master and slave components interact with each other so that's it in this video hope you liked it uh, thank you keep learning and uh, wait for the next video uh, I i'll be coming up with practical sessions this was just a conceptual high level understanding thanks for watching